Welcome to Bridging Two Worlds podcast with me, your host, George the Medium. We will cover all things spiritual, psychic, healing, aliens, paranormal, and more. The aim of this podcast is to stand out from the rest in telling the truth, coming at these topics from a personal angle and discussing many aspects that people don't speak of or know of in these particular fields. Enjoy and welcome. Hello everybody and um, welcome back to Bridging Two Worlds podcast with me, your host, George the Medium. I want to say thank you all for your love and your support recently on the podcast and on the YouTube. I do see your comments and I want to say thank you so much. Um, I am kind of excited and I'm a little bit nervous. I don't normally get nervous in meeting people, but I have one of the most incredible um, people in the, in the spiritual movement, um, and anybody who is, is really deeply connected to the movement will know this lovely man's face. Um, so I, I want to just introduce uh, uh, to everybody to Paul Jacobs. Paul, welcome and thank you. Uh, my pleasure, George. My pleasure. It is a joy and thank you that you have no idea how much this means to me. I started this podcast with a journey and an aim of trying to tell the truth about whether it's spiritualism or paranormal or aliens or whatever people believe in this class is woo woo, <laughs> which to us is just normal life. Yeah. But I wanted to come at it with a really honest angle. Good. And I kind of feel like that's lost kind of nowadays. And, I, and I'll probably start with a bit of a moan maybe is the TikTok mediums is the i don't know if you've ever seen them there's all these people that during lockdown created this monster of people sitting and they just shuffle cards and then a card flies out and they go oh this is for you and they're just throwing out information which to me can be quite damaging so i thought i need to tell make sure people are educated and yeah. have a sense of truth behind it I don't know. Have you seen any of these? Have you ever come across any of these kind of? Yes, yes, yes. It's not just since the internet, but I mean, even these TV channels where they have these uh, card readers, etc. You know, um, but what they're doing, they they, they actually um, um, ask the question to the recipient, "What do you want to know about?" Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, well, um, that's not really good. Uh, well, it's not really good with psychism, you know. Well, how easy is that for anybody to say, what is it you want to know about? Oh, I want to know, am I going to have a baby soon? Yes, you're going to have a baby. Like, it, there's either a yes or there's a no, isn't there? Like, it, and, and I find that the danger within that, though, is the information that can be provided that that person who they're reading for is extremely vulnerable. So, so let me just explain to you a little bit, because, you know, even though psychic um, ability and mediumistic ability is part of each other, they're two separate things, okay? And you see... What's happening with the things that you're you, you're just speaking about um, is that it's given the psyche um, a bad negative name. So, and actually, the psychic work is very important. Yes. I often say to um, student mediums who come who just want to do mediumship and neglect the psyche, I say stop it because if this is going to become your work, you'll lose sixty percent of your clients. Because uh, um, you know, many people who come for a reading do not come because they need evidence of their grandmother yeah and um, you know th they want you to know because of what's going on in their life you know and um, whether it's their home whether it's their relationship whether it's their family whether it's work finances health whatever okay and we can help them better on a psychic level than we can a mediumistic yeah. so but it is up to this the medium working as a psyche to blend with the soul of the recipient spiritually mentally emotionally and physically yeah. and to know what their need is i actually do exercises called meeting the need so you know when i begin a psychic reading i'll blend with the soul of the recipient and from my soul through my feelings i feel into the soul with the question how can i help how are they feeling in life at the moment yeah. yeah and then we build the sitting and then direct it to move it into which aspect they need to know about we're not doing silly fortune telling okay yeah. what we do we get in the facts of the of the now we get in the facts of the past because both are ingredients then we you use then to move them then to the future but not the actual future the potential of the love it that, that's the difference okay yes there are things we can see in a way more long term 
and for the future but that comes under seership which is then comes under the mediumistic um umbrella so you know if a client said to me um I, I, i'm going to have a baby am i going to have a baby um you know i won't answer it but if i'm doing the reading and it comes up naturally yes. then i will say that i remember you'd have to forgive my sense of humor but i had this one young girl she must have only been about 18 and she at the end she says to me and can i ask a question i says yes if you wish she says um, will i have a baby so i says well get yourself a boyfriend have sex and then you might have one you know <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't tell people that's my dry psychic humor you see so yes we can help people the psychic level is good but not a lot of this silly stuff you see on these channels internet yeah. channels and whatever you know uh, a good psychic gordon hingson the finest medium of the day he believed in training all his mediums who he helped through psychometry first so let's let's put a pin in that part because that's really interesting. Let's get to know you and then we can unfold some of the bits that we find okay. most interesting. Good. Because I think it's, I mean, we started on a really kind of hot topic, I suppose, because there is a lot of um, people out there doing these TikTok readings and live readings or whatever who really are coming at it from a really honest place and a really, really um, caring place. But I feel like part of that's lost in what i believe is the the groundwork the roots so if they are the the branches on the tree then the roots of that go underneath the ground are where you're from with your training your development so let's let people know how you got to walk through the door of i believe did you say longton spiritual church and that's where it all kind of kicked off well that's right well actually i started off at wolverhampton spiritualist church my uh hometown um and i just walked in accidentally um i'd been having these strange and weird and wonderful experiences um and then um you know um actually unnerved me because i didn't understand them so because of uh, like maybe my old catholic upbringing um and all what you see in these films and everything your mind starts jumping to something negative and it used to actually you know scare me at times yeah. um so then when i was walking down the street i'd gone down many times um, I just turned and I saw this building with lights on and it said spiritualist church and the door was open. So I thought, oh, I'll go in there and see uh, what's going on. As soon as I walked in and sat down, I thought, I found what I'm looking for. I didn't know what was going to happen. And the medium came on and as she was working, I thought, I know this lady from somewhere. And then she came to me with the contact and uh, halfway through, she says, I know you, don't I? And I said, I think so. And then she says, are you Alfie's son? And I says, yes. She said, well, I won't carry on giving you a contact because it's not fair because I know you. I'll have a word with you afterwards. And it turned out to be my father's aunt. No. And uh, six weeks later, she rang me. She says, are you still going to the church? And I said, uh, I have been, but I said, I don't think it's for me. I says, well, I'm, I'm hearing is a little bit rubbishy, to be honest with you. I says, it's a bit of a nonsense. And um, she went, I'm going to Longton Church this weekend, Gordon Higginson's church, which meant nothing. Would you like to come? Um, so I said, yes. So I got there and he was standing outside his church and she introduced me. And as we shook hands, I just thought it was my own mind, but I heard this voice say, you're going to become friends. And... Um, we did actually we, we we became we had a friendship first before i actually became a student of his yeah. and uh, the medium taking um that service that particular night was the uh, uh wonderful mavis patilla so really i knew you know two of the top people from day one really coming into spiritualism both befriended me and i was fortunate actually because all the top mediums around Gordon at, at that day, they all befriended me. Right. So I had such a wonderful support, yeah? And, you know, when we look at it, um, you know, you mentioned about the grassroots, um, so I'd like to talk, um, uh, sorry, the roots, you know, of the tree to, to yeah. glory. So I'd like to talk that about in a moment. But, you know, if you look at the training, that you know, the, People like Mavis Patilla had, um, Gordon Higginson, myself, wonderful people, a wonderful lady who was a very good personal friend of mine from Scotland, Mary Duffy. I loved her to bits. 
and her mediumship was amazing. And you know, Mary Duffy sat in a church circle, no training, never gave one message. And after 10 years, one night in the circle, she just suddenly went into trance. No, really? Yeah. Oh, so there's a true gift of, of spirit there, isn't that, it? That, that's God. right. I mean, she's one of the few mediums who could actually, I, who could do good actual trance evidential readings. But you couldn't book a trance reading with her. It depended on the client and the spirit world where if they automatically felt it was needed and then my then Mary would automatically end up giving a trans read. <laughs> so what's your thoughts on trans then? Because I, I have seen I, I have <laughs> let's just say I've seen a lot of actresses. I mean some people deserve an Oscar. Yeah. I um, I, 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 I agree. I, I'll be honest with you. Um my opinion's not that high uh, for several reasons, okay? You know, what you've got to look at, and this is what Gordon Higginson taught me from the beginning, he made me go and watch many of the top mediums of the day, and I had to give him an assessment on them oh, okay. after I'd seen them to teach, to teach me to see if I knew what and understood, yeah? Yeah. So, you know, he said, what we've got to realise, Paul, in any trans state, whether it's the speaking, whether it's evidential, whether it's healing, something more has got to be happening than the other mediumistic states. Yes. Otherwise, it's pointless. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So for me, what I do today is with the communication philosophical, because very few do evidential, um, as long as what they say doesn't insult my intelligence, I accept it. I just wish what people would do, because we've got to remember, um, you know, see, a lot of them I listen to, put on this thing that they're in a full unconscious state and they're not that's not commonplace okay so I, i've got an old tape recording of gordon higginson and he was being interviewed and um he was asked about um trans and he said most trans mediums are not trans mediums he said there's those few who are in that full true unconscious state then we get those who are overshadowed which is good it's a lighter form of trans yeah. but then so we have got quite a few who can do that but why keep pretending that they're in that full unconscious state yeah. then is then we've got that there's this inspiration from our own spirit our own soul and i believe there's a knowledge there that our conscious mind's not always aware of which is also good and useful and then god says and then unfortunately then we have a, a percentage who are just delusional. <laughs> you know, yep. that, that, and, and if I could just move on to the healing, you know, I mean, because I came into healing first uh, before the communication, um, sorry. And it's now the in fashion. Nobody wants to be a spiritual healer. Nobody wants to be leveled as a mediumistic healer. They all want to be leveled as, uh, labelled as a trans healer. You know, well, you know, to be honest with you, I wish we could get rid of the word trans. Okay. You know, all mediumship is an altered state of consciousness to one degree or another, you know. Yeah. And and now that um, um, trans has become more um, label for most healers, more common, yeah. I've seen more and more people now advertising themselves as psychic surgeons. Oh, so... So I had a big debate yeah. on Facebook. I upset one or two people. So this lady uh, put on, she says, uh, no, uh, my um, husband uh, had um, cancer uh, in the stomach. I'm not too sure exactly what it was. And um, he had psychic surgery and the, um, the uh, psychic surgery reduced the size of the tumour. I says, first of all, wonderful. He had great spiritual healing that reduced the tumour, but surely if it was psychic surgery, then the tumour should have been removed okay. totally. Yeah, I, I just you know, and it, it, you know, it's even the same with um, physical mediumship today. You know, um, I, I I was at the college and a young man said to me, "Oh, um, it was on the um, public night. He was on the course, and his mom had come along to see him for a drink, so he introduced me." And he said, "Oh, my mom went to a physical science last night." I says. Oh, fantastic. I said, what's well, not a physical science? science. She says, um, oh, materialization, materialization. So I said, well, what did you see then? She says, what do you mean? 
I said, you went to a materialization. That means you should see something with your physical eyes. 100%. Oh, I didn't see anything. Wow. I said, well, how can it be materialization? Yes, but I could feel them physically touch me. Well, that's not materialization. Yeah. I said, and it's not some, I said, I can feel somebody physically touch me through my clear sentience. Yeah. Exactly. You see, and this is what's happening today with you know things are watered down in the teaching yeah. and um you know it's causing i feel sorry for these people um because they've been um misled yeah. and not being taught properly and uh, uh, of the understanding of these different aspects of mediation so i think so i was lucky enough to train with mavis um in manchester and I think that was 2017. And for me, it, it was kind of, I always say I had the jigsaw pieces, but she helped me put them together. That's kind of the, the, the and, and I, I be, be honest, I, I'd never heard of Mavis. I'd never heard of Arthur Finlay. I, I just was, I was in that little bubble. I, I'd stepped away from anything that I'd ever been interested in for a long time, really realize my early days, I was so off. I was so misguided. I was so, but I was held back by someone who had given me some advice and really held on to me and didn't want to let me go free. So I'm about all about education. I'm all about learning, but the right kind of education and the right That's kind right. of learning. That's right. And I mean, so, I mean, I've just encouraged, you know, many, 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 many people and inspired many, many people. Um, I know very much right from day one, she gave me all the encouragement, you know, um, possibly to to go forward with this work. Yeah. I was only in her classes on the odd occasion at Stansted, you know, um, and then, you know, on many occasions we toured together, we demonstrated together, you yeah. know, we, you know, we travelled abroad together. But uh, you do that though, Paul, for people, that's, and, and I don't know, do, are, do you kind of, do you realise that though, that you, you are that for what you've just described Mavis to be for people that I, I tried to do. Um, I tried for, um, well, I'd not just try, I did for a while um, where like Gordon Higginson took um, some of us under his wing personally. Yeah. You know? Am I right? Um, there was only four of you. Is that correct? Well, we, um, well, there's more than that, but we were the last, you know, so the last two was myself and, and Simon James. Yeah. Um, um, and before that, there was a, um, they're not really working such an area, but you probably know of one, definitely um, Gerard Smith and Martin Young. Yep. Before that was Mavis Patilla, Glyn Edwards. Um, with, uh, there was also um, Eileen Davis from Scotland also was in yep. there. Um, but outside that circle, yes, people may have attended a course at the college, um, but, um, you know, in those days when Gordon took courses, there was very little group work. It was really all learning from lectures and um, tutorials. You know, so on a week in those days when I first won, you were the, one of the lucky ones if you got chosen to come out and do something, you know. Um, you know, and, you know, and if you just look at his teaching, you know, um, and, you know, sorry, let me just go back to Mavis, you see. And in the last, you know, a uh, few years of Mavis, um, you know, she very much, you know, yes, she did practical work with students, but again, she did a lot of teaching through the, the speaking, the inspiration, um, aspect to understand, yeah. um, um, and the tutorials. Do you apply the same way, or are you more? Do you? I'm, find I'm, it... I'm more on the on, on the practical side. Yeah. Okay. Um. I do bring in the other aspects um, as well, you know. Sure. But, you know, I, I did sort of like, in a way, take a couple of people on at a time, um, several times. Um, and I'm not going to mention no names, but, uh, you know, because they're, they're all quite well-known mediums, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but unfortunately, um, it also caused me problems. Um, okay. okay. You know, it's like I, I, I went to America and did some teaching and after i'd finished it i had some people from canada say to me um, oh that's not yours that belongs to so and so oh, yeah. and i say uh, i said well what they said was it word to word and they said yes i said well that's where i taught them you know um so i don't mind people using what i've, I've taught them you know sure. always singing from the hymn sheet but you know at least give credit where it came from you know 
exactly. It's like with me. If I use if I use anything of Mavis's, I'll give it credit. If yes. I use anything of Gordon Higginson's, I'll give him his the credit from where it comes from. You yeah. know, um, and if people do that, then there shouldn't be a problem. You know, it, it's yeah. uh, how it is. But very much in the beginning, I want to go back to this roots, and this is the problem: is where people come in and want to jump straight into training mediumship from zero, and they've not done the groundwork and the foundation. Yeah. They haven't got those deep roots. And that's why many never reach their full potential. And that's why many fall by the wayside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, for 12 months, I sat in a group once a week, every day on my own, which I had to learn to build up to one hour. And roughly after 12 minutes, Gordon says, you're now ready to begin. Up to then, I wasn't allowed to do one mediumistic exercise. Oh, okay. What it, what the foundation is, is knowing your own power, developing your own power, understanding in your and knowing your own soul in full truth in all aspects of your being, and work on that of the negativity of it, um, um, discarding accepting changing but also recognizing and embracing the positive yeah and then learning then to lift your power and mind to another level of consciousness okay but in that self-awareness this is the one thing gordon got across people think we're just being fluff and light when we speak about this and i tell you what it's one of my most important ingredients Gordon believed you had to get to know God. Okay, because that is the source of the power. Yep. Okay, so, you know, so I say to my students, I say, why do you keep going off to all these guides, even asking them if you want to go to the toilet or you've got to go shopping? <laughs> and, you know, I said, when I work, why go to one of the soldiers? I go to the chief commander. I go straight to God. Yep. And then God will administer it to the levels of where it's got to go and who it's got to go where my work is with the with the, with the mediumship but even not just in your mediumship even this is important um if you're on a spiritual journey I say, make god your best friend yeah you know, as i'm living my day whether it's speaking to you now if i'm in a nightclub whether i'm in a church yeah i'm listening and allowing that god part of me to experience that what I'm experiencing in my day. Yeah. So what that does is, so when it comes to doing it in my mediumship, it makes it easier to do. I think yeah. it's lost though. Like faith is is an interesting, especially in the UK. Obviously in the states, they're they're they're, they're really big into their belief in God. But I think in the UK, especially with the younger generations, I understand that. But but you see, but again, they're not being taught about it. You absolutely. see, absolutely. Um, you know, if if you look at myself, well, you know, when I came into spiritualism. Um, I, I'd been a good Catholic boy, and um, because of certain things and what the priests told me, I told them where they could stick their God. I want nothing to do with God anymore. Um, but so it took me a while. Um, so you know, and then you know, so like when I first went to a spiritualist, though, I thought, well, oh, their concept of God is totally different to the Catholic Church uh, or where I've been taught. Um, I've, I can't pray anymore. I've got nobody to pray to. Um, but then when my understanding came, you understand yep. of it, you see, and you see this development, this self awareness, and this relationship, God, power, call it whatever it is you want, it's yep. just a universal life. God, that's right. For me, it doesn't matter in what way anybody wants to see God, what name they want to call, what religion they want to go under, as long as God's in their life, it doesn't yep. matter. You know, and this is where I say I've got a quote on my uh, it's on my website. I say, you know, um, God has to be in your mediumship, but God cannot be in your mediumship unless God is in your life. Yes, and that's what will make a um, real difference. But even those who don't want to do mediumship, I can remember driving in a, along in a car, driving Gordon about when he couldn't drive anymore to do his work, and I was telling him how I slept with an axe under my bed. And he said, what on earth are you sleeping with an axe under your bed for? I said, well, my home was burgled and I'm scared of it happening again um, in case I'm asleep in bed. And he says, Paul, he says, don't you realise how well protected you are? He says, 
nothing untoward will ever happen to you. And I, said, I thought, um, and, bef- and then all of a sudden he paused and he said, and even in your car. Now, ever, I never told him I had this fear I was going to die in a car accident because my father did, my grandmother did, two best friends did. And I thought, fantastic, great. Um, I'll cancel my pensions and take extra life, uh, sorry, my life insurance and take extra yeah. pension. Um, but when I got home, I sat about it and I thought, well, that's wonderful me, but why am I so well protected yeah. and not everybody? So I sent the thought out to the spirit and the answer I got back was, we try to do the same for everybody, but we are limited by how much you can respond to our influence. So if everybody could do that development I'm on about, yeah, then the spirit world can have more influence in that person's life, you know, to inspire them, that still silent word, the right place, the right person. Yeah. Um, not to do that, not go there. Yeah. We've yeah. all experienced that in little ways. Okay. Yeah. But if we could do what we could say, the spirit world could have greater influence. With it. It's there for all of us, you see. And I think what we've lost a little bit, and don't forget me, I'm a medium, uh, whatever, I've enjoyed it, I, I love it. But spiritualism has come really the emphasis, which, okay, it might sound, you know, I'm being a little bit contradictory on myself, you know, but, um, you know, because my love is teaching mediumship, training mediumship, whatever, uh, um, demonstrating mediumship. But, you know, spiritualism should really all be about everybody becoming a medium or a healer. Yep. It's about a spiritual journey. And if we truly become becoming spiritualists and doing this journey, then in a way, if we can do what I've just said and have this relationship with this God and this power, we could actually make all mediums redundant. We wouldn't need any mediums. Yeah. You know, and God help us if everybody wants to become mediums, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even though I'm one of them. It's so, funny though, because discipline is the thing i speak about so much um in any work that i do within the spiritual field it's all about discipline you have people coming up and they're asking you the question you know how did you find your journey and you tell them and then the one the one thing beyond the story of the the you know the the the, the day that i say my great grandmother flicked the switch and turned the, the turned the light switch on from to my spiritual gift is discipline and and that's a, i feel like that's lost because again everyone wants to be a famous medium they want to have like a superstar yeah yeah three hundred thousand followers and whatever else and and it's like well you can buy followers nowadays so then there's these people who are buying followers because they want the bigger status and so then it loses the the discipline the authentic and i i could only imagine what must go on in your head at times when you see these people coming either online or in front of them you think how am I going to approach this without then tearing away? Because their ego is going to be bruised. That's right. Let's take the lady from Scotland, do you know? Um, I mentioned Mary Duffy. Okay. Yeah. Now, she travelled throughout, not just Scotland, throughout the UK. She did the odd trip abroad, OK? Now, in those days, there's no social media, yeah. whatever. And she would travel the country, um, the, the UK, week in, week out. And the churches would be packed out simply on word and mouth and the quality of a reputation yeah yeah um you know um people are forcing it you know um you know i mean okay because because I, I i moved abroad and did a lot of work abroad so um i lost churches i still do churches occasionally but you know i mean i've got a bit of, when me and simon james first began out began we used to do a lot of demonstrations together in our first year we could pack out any church in the country. Yeah. You know, very few churches, churches can get packed out now. Yeah. But why? Even, even then, you see, we wasn't, you know, so we're going back all those years. Yep. Um, so we're going back to, like, you know, um, early 90, you know, around late 89, 89 90, yeah. Yep. Um, and so we wasn't using social media. But one, the reputation would start to build, but also... The reputation, knowing that we've been trained by the best school in England. Absolutely. Well, I was interviewing Lisa Williams recently, and I said to her, like, the numbers in the churches in, in, in the UK 
are are they're, they've dwindled. They're not dwindling. They've dwindled. They're, they're, they're you know there's tumbleweed sometimes blowing through because it's so empty. And she said it's the same in the states. She said it's exactly the same. It's no longer that. And I think what you're saying is so true is that the people knew the reputation of the quality of what you were trained by. So then going out into that. So what was that like? What was that young Paul? in that first year going out into these places what what would describe that feeling of going into those churches i, I, I mean like that you know when you think that first year you're still in a way like an apprentice you know and um, you see for me it was a little bit different because when most people start off going into churches they're demonstrating you know 10 20 30 40 people my first demonstrations in churches were to 150 200 300 people because my first demonstrations in churches was Gordon Higginson taking me with him. Yeah. So I had to face big audiences right from the beginning. And walk alongside Gordon at the same yeah. time. So, you know, um, but actually that did me good because it inspired, because I didn't want to let him down and put in that trust and faith. Yeah. I was all conscious because he hadn't told the church I was coming. So you could see the faces drop that I was going to demonstrate because they only wanted to listen <laughs> to him. But nobody's going to want a message. Off, nobody's going to want a message off me, you know. So, so because I, I wanted to not let him down, okay, besides the congregation of the spirit world, it inspired me to reach for the highest I could. Yeah. And later on, when it, when it was time for me then um, to move out on my own, he said to me, Paul, never go on the platform with anybody lesser than yourself. And that didn't, I thought, well, that doesn't sound very nice, you yeah. know. Um, and then I says, why? He says, because you will aspire to that person who's got, um, yeah. And, and and that's what I did, and you know, but you know, the problem is a lot of not everybody please. There's some wonderful people out there, but you know, sometimes what what we do, you know, they get there, they finally get there onto the platform to the public, yeah. okay, and to be honest, with you, they never move forward from that, or they actually drop in the standstill, because you know they don't, they're not inspired to to keep moving, to keep strengthening yes. their their mediumship. I can remember Gordon the incident saying to me, he says, uh, he's one day he said to me, you know, um, how far do you want to go with your mediumship? And I said, to be as good as you. And he looked at me and he says, uh, why stop there? Oh, why I'm not trying to be better. What a beautiful thing to okay. say. If, if, if only, you know. <clears throat> and, but, but like those who I took up under my wing, you know, yeah. um, you know, the, um, I encourage them to be more and if they could be better than me and i can remember when i used i remember i had four of them on the platform with me and i'll be honest with you the evening's demonstration was absolutely one of the best all-round demonstrations i'd seen for years and so but before we went on they said um oh paul well, you know they're all in this nervous state in the sanctuary at the art of the college or whatever and i said what you're getting a state yeah, yeah, but you know, we you know, we're demonstrating with you and, and we're gonna do this. I said, look, I said, I should be more nervous than you, I said, by demonstrating with you, because you're all gonna go first. I trained you all. Yeah. Okay. So if you all have outstanding dems, they can expect me to be even better. Yeah. I said, but if you are better than me, I'm more than happy. Yeah. Isn't that a proud moment as a teacher, though, to get to look at students that are surpassing your your expectations or achieving what they it deserve? And and I think it's there was an interview that I heard of Gordon's that there was a moment that stood out that said that what the question that was asked is what's your hopes for the spiritual movement at, at a whole? And he said if the movement doesn't progress, the churches will die. Basically, it wasn't words like that, but saying that if the, the movement doesn't change and grow, then the doors will close. And then I'm wondering, is that what's happening? Yeah, I, I mean, it has been happening, but I mean, fortunately, I, and I believe so anyway, different people have different views, you know, we had a change within the organisation who, who run it. They can't change things overnight, okay? Um, and even with the college, there's going to be big changes. Um, the, um, the, the new team, new president, you know, Minister Jackie Wright and the team she's building, 
Um, you know, I know some of the ideas, the plans. I know what she's already tried to achieve. So step by step, we are going to yeah. see changes. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, it, you see, one of the problems is a lot of people who are, are coming to develop mediumship, they're tending not to want to use it with inspirationism. They want it outside spiritualism as a business and a career. Yes. I mean, to be honest, in case anybody's saying again, I'm being, because um, um, I do both. Okay. Yeah. I'll do my full-time work, um, like I'll go to America, I'm in Australia next week, whatever. Yes, I earn a decent living from it, it's my full-time work, but then, you know, I always give back to the churches. Um, you know, if they can give me my petrol money, then fine. Exactly. Um, you know, um, if, if they want to give me, if they can afford to give me anything to, on top of that, then yeah. that's fine. If they can't, then that's fine. I think that's me. what's lost, so I'm, I'm the same as you. I, I, this is my full-time job, I can make a career at it, but there is also all the things where we do charity work, we donate our time for free, you know, like you say, if you go to a church and they can give you 20 quid to cover your fuel, wonderful, if they can, then we're there in service of spirit, and that's and that's where people don't strike where the balance, and I suppose the topic the topic of what we've really been getting at is the old and the new, and how does how do we bridge that together, looking at the plans for the, the, the you know, uh, the Arthur Finley College and the uh, the, the right, yeah. at large. Yeah. So what we're going to do see, with Arthur Finley College, first of all, you know, we, we've put on weeks now because before it was mainly our own spiritualists that used to come. It's, it's now the, a lot of the general public. Yes. So um, I'm part of the programme, uh, Secretary. Uh, uh, yeah, there. And um, so what we do, which was something me and Jackie wanted for, been wanting for a number of years, but we couldn't get it through to the the people who were running before. Uh, so we've now introduced five church and district weeks to encourage the spiritualists from our churches. We're all do also doing them at special reduced price because a lot of the spiritualists say they can't afford. Yeah. Uh, so like at the moment, there's four. The, there's a wonderful um, church members week will be organised by Simon James and Brian Robertson yeah. um, so anybody from the country who's a member of a church can join that, get the reduced price then there's different district councils like Merseyside and there's North Yorkshire, Manchester, whatever yeah. but you don't have to belong to those districts okay, you can be a member of any church in the country to be on at the reduced um, price and then also then for those who are individual members of the union who aren't a member of a church then we've got a week to reduce price for them so we're trying to bring our long-standing spiritualists from our community and our family from our churches back into the yeah. college and then hopefully then that will help their development and training in the mediumship which they're then going to give back to the churches for the future but just give you one little example and this is where i do blame the churches there was a church in Birmingham that was ready to close down. They were only getting about five people. So I was asked to help. So this says, Paul, would you take charge of the programme for um, mediumship nights, which is like every yeah. Thursday? Yeah. So I said, yes. I said, but I'm going to change it to um, every other Thursday. And, oh, can't you do every week? And I says, no. And I said, why? I said, because... I can't fill every week to the quality I want. Yes. Okay. So I did it every week. I didn't care how far the per the medium had to travel. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, from the first day of doing that, the numbers went from five and would average between eighty and a hundred. Oh my god. So what you've got to look at is you know, and this, I think sometimes this might be a little bit small sighted of our church. Oh, we can't bring them the petrols too much. Okay, um, but you know, but then, but then we'll get bigger congregations and audiences. I can remember offering uh, a few years ago <clears throat> thirty churches a free demonstration. Yeah, there was a couple of Sundays, which is collection, and I think it was Cambridge um, Church, and I went there, and no, how long was going? This might be about seven years ago, um, and you couldn't get anywhere near the church with cars. It was packed to the reefs. This was a Sunday night. And as you know, Sunday nights don't get as full as a leaving of mediumship. Yeah. And this is poor good God, we've we've never had so many people in us on a Sunday for years. 
and you know, without again sounding conceited, yeah. but if somebody knows of some going off that's something that, um, that's a little bit more of standard and quality and a reputation of it, the people come. Yeah. And I think that's what's lost as well. I think that there's this disconnect, isn't there? There's the disconnect from people yeah. supporting the, the local mediums or the visiting rather than always having to be someone like yourself. Why can it not be that there's this regular support? But I also think there's a lot of people that are there, they've been there so long, they're older, they don't want change. Yeah, I, I, yeah, but it, it, yes and no. It, it, I, I, I think it, it's more to do that they, in a way, there has to be a little entrepreneur, little business aspect to be yeah. motivation. Hundred percent. Um, to do it, you know, um, you know, <clears throat> I had to laugh when you said local medium. At the end of the day, we're all local mediums, you exactly. know, and um, you know, exactly. um, so you know. If, um, um, what what we're gonna you know look at is we do pe need people with a little bit more energy now. You see, people get in a routine, they get in a rut, they're scared of change. You know, um, you know, um, changes can be scary, but you know, even if change comes through um, um, sort of not so positive circumstances, Gordon always insisted change should always be. For the better, even though it may have been negative circumstance that's brought it in, and we've got to now march forward. We've got to go forward more yeah. positively and really start to get the true essence of what spiritualism really is about. I don't know whether you've ever heard of this guy. His um, <clears throat> his name was uh, Ronald Baker. He's a minister of the Union. Uh, he was also at one time the general secretary. What an amazing speaker! I listened to him speak in the um, um, late eighties, and um, and I actually went down to Wales to listen to him in Esther Laveria. And in the late eighties, and I've never forgotten that lecture today. And the lecture was called "The Ship of Spiritualism." And what he said was, "What we've done, we've allowed the pirates to come aboard our ship." and take down the flag of light, truth, and nature, and have hoisted the skull in those parts. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So what we've done, and please, again, I don't want to offend anybody who's listening, who's involved. Yeah, there's many aspects, what you can say, associators or yeah. under the new age umbrella, and that's fine. They've got their part to play. Yeah? I'm not saying they're not useful. They're not helpful. But... Which, in a way, we're being, in a way, it's coming under that. It's spiritualism. Yeah. And it's not, you know. And this is why, you know, I, I can remember a few, a number of years ago, people said, oh, Paul, you need to take a sideline on besides mediumship, you know, take on um, numerology or astrology or whatever. I said, you know, if that's what everybody wants to do, fine. I've come in this to get the message of spirit. Yeah. That's what I'm about. I suppose that's the, the where, so what I was talking about, change. Right, just to think about, I was recommend. I said, I, this lady had said, "Oh, um, she's very involved in churches in Scotland. She serves a lot of them." And, and I'd said, um, "You know, always let anybody know. I am. I'll travel anywhere that I need to go to be there to to be in service." And so I said, "She was going to one this Sunday evening." She said, "I'm going to drop your name in and let them know. Can I give them your contact details?" Absolutely. And then she said, "Oh, I don't want to say who said it." but they said they wouldn't have you on board because you have tattoos. And I thought, how stuck in an older way than like you being progressive, your roots are there, but you're still willing to see what needs to be done there to take it from that to that. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 again, but you see, I mean, um, I'm like, okay, it's not like tattoos, but I, I can remember me and Simon James, we, um, cause I was, I was in the clothing business and I bought this job lot of jackets. Okay. And the colors were, uh, bright purple, bright orange, mm -hmm. bright red, and a very bright blue. So me and Simon had one in each color <laughs> and, and, you know, like 
people because oh we need our sunglasses with you two you know um you know um you know in the past you wouldn't think of somebody going with a bright orange jacket or a yeah. bright red jacket you know um you know simon and got his hair down down here you know um and a wonderful dry humor that he could bring yeah. in who's medium shit um you know it was it, it was good and I, I think done right it, it, it's I, I don't think that's the masses you know it's yeah. only the the few True. steady people, you know. Yeah. Um, I think most people today are accepting, you know, of um, everybody as an individual expression in the way they are today. So I don't think that's the problem. But you know, you know, we, we've hopefully, you know, we're getting like, you know, the more people back to working in the churches. You know, if I look at those who um, I uh, help train and get where they are today with their mediumship, they become international mediums. They work at the college. And they said to me one day, they said, Paul, what can what what do you want back? What can we give back for what you've done? I said, For me, nothing. And so what do you mean for you? Nothing. I said, there's only one thing I ask of you. No matter how well popular become, how well known, what a bigger name, yeah. always keep time to go to the churches, the service of churches. Love it. Yeah. And it's keeping the balance between the two, you see. And also, which I've got to admit, I've had to do in my own journey, is that the it's also your motive and intent behind what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. And I can remember, and we can lose it. And this is why this self and awareness has to continue. I can remember driving to a church and I was speaking to the spirit in my mind, and I kept saying, you know, the last few Dems haven't been as good as they should have been. You're going to have to pull your socks up. And uh, I heard these sort of words come back. Why are you doing this? What was the reason? What was your motive and intent? And I had to truthfully acknowledge I'd lost it. I was going out to demonstrate just simply to prove how good Paul Jacobs could be. I got to that service and every contact that night was for somebody whose funeral had only taken place that week or the funeral hadn't even taken place. Oh. So I've gone back to the motive and intent. And that takes me back to something maybe Spatilla, I had maybe Spatilla saying many years ago when she was doing a lecture and she said to the audience of students, why do you want to be a medium? And uh, like one would say, oh, because I want to uh, be of service. So she says, there's plenty of other ways to be of service. Why is the medium? Oh, um, um, I want to help people. There's many other ways to help people, but why as a medium? And nobody could give her the answer. Yeah. And do you know what the answer was? Okay. It's because it's what your soul needs to do. I thought that was beautiful. That's yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. How is this life? changed Paul Jacobs so like Paul Jacobs at 15 16 years of age what did you want to do then to then how is this now affected you now and changed when I was when I was that age I just wanted to be a multi-millionaire um, <laughs> my, my family had been in the clothing business so I wanted a shop next to Marks and Spencer's in every town and city in the country that was my dream oh my god amazing <laughs> and so then now that you're you're this you know internationally create claimed medium and extremely well respected tutor how has that changed you what what do you feel like if you could sit back and look at that life of yours how has that changed you it it's it, it's basically it, it's, it's that it's meant that it's actually become my life yeah. that's who and what i am um and this is why i do say to people who want to become full-time mediums be careful um you don't know what commitment and dedication it takes. You know, if you think my life is booked two and a half years in advance, yeah, and I have to honour that, and I do. Yeah, um, I've even signed myself out of hospital. You know, to, to go to help. Yeah, um, and what you've got to realise is so that that's meant like you're not free to go to special events or occasions that are arranged. Um, I, I don't have time for other hobbies or interests. Um, so, you know, you don't, in a way, lead a normal Yeah, there's life a lot of sacrifice, life. isn't there? Yeah, but what I have done, to be honest with you, I changed a few years ago 
I started making sure actually I'd got some people I could socialize with outside spiritualism. Yeah. What what in fact I, I went on holiday with two lady friends. They know what I do, but they're not interested. And we were away for two weeks. And after a few days, I couldn't have a conversation with them for the rest of the holiday because I've got nothing else to talk about. Oh gosh. Because they didn't want me to talk about this subject. Yeah, and this is this is it. This is because this and I thought, Paul, this has got to change. Yeah. So I like I always like to keep up to date with all the world knows what's going on. I like my football. I like to go to my sports bar and uh, we watch the match. We can talk about football. We can talk about politics. We can talk about whatever. Just the normal every day. Yeah. Keep that balance, you see. And but the other side of me now is like like because I was like in, in the business field. I'm now doing a lot of voluntary work for the union, the college. Um, where I'm using my business skills voluntary, so that's another way of giving back um, as well. But actually, I'm enjoying that because that's part of the old pool, which I sometimes used to miss. So I'm now incorporating that, but still within my spiritualist work. You know? yeah. So, so, so it's, it's funny because I, so I opened. I, I seen there was a need in Glasgow for uh, a kind of. I don't want to say modern day. That's maybe the wrong word, but uh, a spiritualist center that opened the door to. Um, people who didn't want to come into the religion or didn't know about the SNU or that I was kind of lost. And I, I had done readings in the city for years and, and so decided, I, I, I was like, I, I just felt this kind of push to to, to go and look for something bigger. And, and the, I've got to be honest, my centre is a really, really big space right in the, you couldn't get any more central in, in Glasgow. And so from that, it opened a door to people coming in and, and my dream is to, to have other people, other tutors to come and work at the the, the kind of place to have a, a kind of bit of a central base but it's trying to keep the 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 new people that come in for me to try and teach them the old and the discipline and the knowledge and the things that for example that Gordon would speak about because then you're having people coming in the door and all of a sudden they just want to propel themselves to be this superstar medium and what I realize is for me is a lesson we were talking about ourselves and looking at us I had to really accept that that was okay for them to step away because I wanted to nurture and help them and support them in any way I possibly could. But I then found that letting them go was maybe something that I was holding on to. Do you find that, do you find that in the sense where letting people move on, is that an easier thing now or, or was it, was it ever difficult? Um, <clears throat> uh, you mean in people who I've helped, who I've tried to help? Oh, sorry, I apologize. Yeah. People yeah, yeah. Um, um, no, I, I, I mean, um, one quite well-known tutor who I took out for his first demonstration and after about six demonstrations, I said to him, that's the last one now, you're on your own. Oh, you can't do that. I says, yes, I can. I says, I know you're capable now. I said, if I carry on with you, I'll become a crutch. Ah, okay, wonderful. Because if you go on too long sharing a platform with somebody else, you'll never build and sustain your own power to do yeah. a whole demonstration because the other two, other mediums are becoming a crutch for you. And yeah. then the longer you do that, the more difficult it comes to yeah. break, you know. When it's like me now, I enjoy demonstrating with colleagues, but I'll be honest with you, I love demonstrating on my own because you build your own power. Yeah. yeah. And you tap into the audience, and I think like you and I have got really dry humour, so that can come through and the way of, when you're working alongside someone you're always minding of how you speak and how they speak and not wanting to seem then in your humor we might seem disrespectful because they don't have that kind of humor whereas i'm very like you very dry and quite dark and you know i i find humor in things that maybe other people don't and i think that's so important that comes into the audience or any client that you're working with yeah i mean, I mean you, you know you I've, I've got it you know you know, I, I love a good sense of you. I, I mentioned Simon James to you and his humour. And and I, I probably, I think, he's got one of the finest humours I've, I've heard of any medium, okay? And when so when we started out, we did the demos together. So he was the funny one and I was the very serious one, yeah? Mm. And and after a while, what I un began to understand that I'd got to lighten up one thing, yeah? And Simon had got to go the other way. And I read, I said to Simon, I said, you know, I said, you know, um, people just absolutely love you, uh, your humour. I said, you're an amazing medium. I said, but 
pe some a lot of people are coming because of your humor i says so i would calm it down because a lot of me there's a lot of mediums use humor also to cover up bad mediumship yeah. and you don't and you don't have bad mediumship to cover up yeah. so so he still kept his humor but he just tempered it and i had to just lighten up a little bit and again get, get that balance um right you know so so you know there's nothing wrong with humor um uh, and it's good that we're all different personalities yeah. and we all express ourselves differently otherwise if you're going in once twice a week to listen to a, a medium uh, it's going to be pretty boring isn't it you know um, um it, it's part of it i can remember saying and my accent was even stronger than it is now being from uh, wolverhampton and um, and i said to gordon i said i'm not going to be able to speak on the, the speaking side and he says why and i said because of my my accent and my grammar um, i'm not well read my vocabulary is not that good um and i says um i says if i did go that way i would have to go for elocution lessons yeah. and he looked at me he says don't you dare that is part of you and your individuality don't lose it <laughs> yeah. what is that then so there there's paul and, and uh, we're going to kind of wrap things up but looking at yourself now do you look back in um in a fond way of seeing the younger you like do you are you able to look back and go i can really do you know we were hard on ourselves as people aren't we especially i, 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 I wish I, I wish i could transport back to that period honestly it, it was it, i don't know yeah i mean don't remember i enjoy now i have some good time if i didn't still enjoy, enjoy it i wouldn't i wouldn't still be doing it gordon Eganson actually said he said paul once the joy goes out of it call it a day so okay but you know i've got so many memories i just i just miss you know you know like your mary duffy's your albert bess your mavis Patillo's, your glenn edwards your gordon um Igginson's, um you um i know she's not past yet uh, nita saunders from scotland who i met earlier uh, amazing ron baker you know all, all, yeah. all, all but we don't seem to have uh, um, that degree of quality in quantity sure. working within our mood with working within our churches yeah you see because in the old days it wasn't it wasn't career True. okay you know most of those people weren't looking really to earn their living from it yes and i think that's what's something yes i earn my living from it like i say it's keeping that balance yeah, yeah? um in mavis patilla's words um give unto god what's god's give unto caesar what's caesar's yeah i'm that. sure you've heard those words that's yeah a, yeah and, and i've always tried to do that yeah. See, see then within that balance, and and I, I want I, there's one question in my mind that I always wanted to ask you before we finish. Evidence. When someone is, how would you describe what evidence should be? Because there are so many variations of what people think. In one way, you can't. Okay, and yeah. um, you see, what you've got to realise is, um, it has to be about the spirit communicator. Yeah. Often you'll say, see someone say, oh, your grandmother's here, and then all the information is about the recipient. No. Yeah. So we can't say that's coming from the spirit world. Yeah. Okay. So there's got to be enough there that you feel confident as the medium and the and the recipient does that that person's real there. And this is what we've got to be careful of. We all want this good, strong, practical evidence, yeah. Okay. Um, which we all want to one degree or, or another. Yeah. But also what happens is that but we've got to make sure we bring the balance in with it, with the emotion and the essence of the communicator, okay? Because that's what brings them alive, yeah? And the recipient then can, in a way, feel that as well. So what might be good for you, what you want from one of your people, may not be for somebody else. One recipient wants more practical, another wants more feeling and emotional. Yeah. I can remember giving this lady a, a, a reading and as I was giving it, I thought, wow, Paul, you're on fire here. This, I wish, I wish somebody had given me a reading like this. And she sat stone faced. All the, I thought, I don't believe this. And then I said to her at the end, I said, it's time for your father to go. And I just leant over and said, oh, he just wants to stroke your face like he did every night before you went to sleep. 
and she just broke down. That meant far more to her than anything else in all the practical efforts. One more quick example, which I think is important. I was in um, Geneva, the French Master Swiss, and um, did the demonstration. But right at the beginning, there was a young girl. I mean, I don't know how old she. I mean, she. I mean, when we get older, everybody looks younger. You know, she only seemed a kid. You know, uh, so but I just knew she was going to have a contact. So I did the demonstration. It was time to bring it to a close, and then I went to her and I said, "You've heard all the other people have communication from their family." I said, but um, I need to come to you, but you're not going to get what they got. I said, all I want to say to you is, your father's here. I said, and he walked through the front door and never returned home. And it's not your fault. Oh. I didn't give her anything else. She was in pieces. Oh. No order. She didn't need any more. That's all she needed to know. It wasn't her fault. And you trusted in spirit. You trusted yeah. in the fact that that's all that needed to be said. Yeah. See, what we've got to realise, technique and structure is very important. Yep. But what, what's happened, really, probably since probably Gordon's past, okay, we've lost the naturalness. So what I'm trying to do in my um, teaching is bring back the importance of the naturalness. Yep. Then secondary then whatever comes and whatever you receive the communication naturally, then you put the right technique and structure. But we've done it, we've took away the naturalness and just put it all technique and structure. So if we can put in naturalness first, then technique and structure. Right. My last question. When you are no longer here, what do you hope that your legacy has left on the world? Uh, well, yeah, well, uh, you're not going to talk for that for about eight. A lot of hope. I mean, in many different, in many different ways. I one of my main aims has always been to try to help, encourage, and like the younger people who are going to carry on as mediums of a quality that can carry our message yeah. forward. Okay, and then through my own mediumship, I just hope I can have touched um, as many as possible that this, through the communication from the spirit world, has touched their soul, brought an awakening, and made some sort of difference to their life. And in the words of good and innocent news, he said, if we can only touch one person and make a difference, our lives be worthwhile. Beautiful. Thank you, Paul. No absolute joy to speak to you and thank i really you. feel that people will thank you i really feel people will take from this and learn i think that's the real thing is is talking about the development the structure and the growth so thank you for that honestly it really is an absolute utter joy thank to anybody you. else that's listening please um follow on subscribe there's other episodes you can go back and have a listen to please as i always say be good to yourself and be kind to one another uh, and please join us again for bridge into a world's podcast with me your host george the medium thank you bye bye bye, -bye, bye, -bye everyone bye george